Y'all ready to get in this tonight? When you really understand that the problem that we have in relationships is that we don't understand that they are first spiritual. And the problem is, is you try to deal with all the fruit and all the practical stuff and you've not fixed the spiritual stuff first. And then you wonder why it doesn't work because you just dealt with fruit, baby. You never got down to the root. But tonight we're going to get to the root. Tell somebody, say he's getting to the root tonight. Hallelujah. I want you to go in your Bibles tonight. Go to Genesis chapter 2 tonight. Y'all ready tonight? We just want to again thank Ron's tonight. She did a great job with the team. Amen. Also, Charmaine. And did you enjoy that play? Did, how many people, be honest, you saw yourself in that play tonight? And if you don't raise your hand, I, listen, I'm going to pray that you get saved at the end tonight. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. Hallelujah. When you have it, say amen. And the Lord caused the deep sleep to fall on Adam, say the man, and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up his flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into woman, what was this, say man with a womb, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of a man. Watch this. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. Now, I could stop right there and teach you a little bit. That's the problem with most married folk is there's still two people. And you got your life, and they got their life, and y'all just roommates. And so, because nobody ever left and went to cling to. All right, all right, all right. So, but watch this, watch this now. Uh, and therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become what? One flesh. Watch this. They shall become one soul. One mind, one set of thoughts, one will, and one set of emotions. Watch this. And they were both naked. Say they were naked. The man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Well, watch this. They were not ashamed to be real with one another. All right. All right. Go to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. Just one more I want to show you. We're going to get in this thing tonight. Y'all all right? Again, we welcome all of you tonight. If this is your first time tonight, we're glad to have you. And uh, we hope that you'll come back. Especially Sunday, because you're going to need Sunday, because you can't have a good relationship unless you can communicate. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. First Peter chapter 3, I want you to go to verse number 1. Look at what it says. Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they, without a word, may be won by the conduct of their wives. Well, watch this. When they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear or reverence, do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging your hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. Rather, let it be in the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. Just touch them, I say quiet. What's this? Which is very precious in the sight of God. For in this manner, in former times, the holy woman who trusted in God also adorned themselves, being submissive to their own husbands, as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Mighty quiet in this church tonight. I ain't going to call no man nothing. That's why you ain't got one. Okay. Uh, let me just give you a disclaimer tonight. Uh, I didn't come to just say some cute preaching stuff and get you to shout real good and all that. So if that's what you came for, I'm sorry. Now, it's not refundable, but I'm sorry. But, but that ain't what you're going to get tonight. T tonight, I'm going to get real. Tell somebody to say real. That's the problem with the body of Christ. Everybody playing these church games and ain't nobody getting nothing accomplished. You ain't got to say nothing. I know I'm right. Whose daughters you are if you do good and not afraid of any terror. Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Uh, uh -huh. God, God says, husbands, if you don't honor your wife as I honor the church, God says, I'm not listening to your prayer. So you can fast, you can pray, you can get on your knees, you can pray that you blew in the face. You can call bishop to get in the prayer, you can get the men of prayer to pray, you can call promise keepers to pray. God says, I'm not doing nothing unless you treat your wife right. All right. Finally, all of you be of one mind. Say one mind. Having compassion for one another, love as brothers, be tenderhearted, be courteous, not returning evil for evil or reveling for reveling, but on the contrary, blessing. Somebody say blessing. Knowing that you were called to this, that she might inherit a blessing. Go, go up there to verse 7. I want to give it to you again. 
Watch this. Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as the weaker vessel, being heirs together, say together, of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Well, watch this. Just help me announce this to your neighbor tonight. Say, neighbor, make sure the price is right. I dare you to slap high five with somebody else. Say, neighbor, you better make sure the price is right. Hallelujah. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord tonight. I want to get right into this. Again, I want to give you a disclaimer. I came to be real tonight. I came to be practical tonight. I came with no holes barred. So that's why we have kids' church, because I'm going to talk to adults. See, you got scared in the church, because don't remember. Do that. Are y'all ready to jump into this tonight? Now watch this. There are four groups of people here tonight. They're single folk, dating folk, married folk, and folk that are in between. Watch this. People came tonight looking for answers. Say answers. For guidance and direction. And I dare you to look at somebody and say, tonight is your night. Please understand, the problem in most relationships is that we have an inaccurate diagnosis and therefore we get an incorrect prognosis because if you don't understand what the real root of the problem is, you'll try to fix stuff and you'll be fixing the wrong thing. And what happens in relationships is we try to fix people as opposed to fixing ourselves and wonder why nothing happens. I wish y'all would say something to me tonight. And so please understand, in this, I want to say this up front, you're not a failure if you've made mistakes in relationships. Let, let me just hear. How many people you made a mistake in a relationship? Let me see your hand. Therefore, we all in the same boat. So ain't no sense of you trying to act like you're holier than now because your halo is spinning in the church tonight. We've all made mistakes. So we've all made mistakes in relationships. Watch this. It doesn't make you a failure. What makes you a failure if you choose to stay in that mistake and keep repeating that mistake relationship after relationship after relationship. You do know the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over again and yet expect a different result. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm not insane tonight. So let's get into this. You're going to take plenty of notes tonight. What is a relationship? Oh, Bishop, I just felt it in my spirit. I, I just, the Lord told me. Baby, that was the chili you ate last night. You eat too late. You need peps at AC. A relationship, let me give this to you, is a decision to engage in perpetual connection, association, or involvement. Get that to you again. A relationship is not a feeling. A relationship is a decision, say decision, to engage in perpetual connection, association, or involvement. Watch this, watch this. A good relationship comes at a price. P -p please understand. Please understand. A good relationship is going to have ups and downs because that's what defines it. That's what gives it strength. A good relationship is not that it's all good all the time and you tiptoeing through the tulips. That means something's wrong. A good relationship has ups and downs because they're two people trying to commingle their lives together and now not become two flesh, but to become one flesh. And the problem is you're trying to combine one mind, one set of thoughts, one will, one emotion. And so every now and then you're going to have some issues. Just your neighbor say every now and then there's going to be some issues. Now watch this. Here's the deal. Either you pay up front and you pay less. Because watch this, and we're going to get in this tonight, because we got singles, we got dating, we got me. I'm going to get in it. Touch that neighbor, so he's going to get in it tonight. I'm going to be all in your Kool-Aid tonight. Watch this. Either you pay up front by getting stuff fixed before you get papers. Let me bust all the folks' bubble who think after you get married, stuff is going to change. Whatever they do before, they're going to do it in, in intensity afterwards. So either you pay up front, we're going to get into that tonight, you pay less, and doesn't it feel good? Or you wait until during the marriage, during the relationship, and it's going to cost you more. Y'all ain't talking to me tonight. I preach, Bishop. I listen. Watch this. Now watch this. I want to get into this because everybody's got, how many people, let me, especially ladies, you have, you know, we sometimes get these fairy tale versions of what a relationship is and I just woke up one morning and walked outside and there was Bishop and my sanctified soul told me that that's him that's him that's my Boaz and he walked up to me and said he's a man of God and he walked up to me and said he goes to church 
And he said all the right things. And so we get these fairy tale things. So I want to bust that bubble. Let's talk about biblical relationships. You ready? In the Bible, a biblical relationship was a business decision. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me tonight. I know. I, I, you, you, can check it, you can check it out. It was a business decision between the parents of the groom and the bride, and they would put together what's called a ketubah, an agreement between both parties and say, this works good for us, this works good for you, let's do it. And matter of fact, they didn't get to date before they married. They had to get married, then they dated. Because the agreement was already in place. So, so let's understand what a biblical relationship was. It was a business decision. A few families didn't get jacked up. One jacked up family didn't go look for another one. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me tonight. Do you not understand that a marriage is not just between two people? It's between one person and all they stuff and another person and all they stuff. When you stand at that altar, you're standing with their generational curses. You're standing with their baggage. You're standing with their crazy mama them. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me tonight. You're marrying everything that pertains to them. So that's why in the Bible it had to be a good business decision. The fathers would check each other's business records and say, show me your books. I need to know you ain't bankrupt. Show me your credit. They didn't have that back then, but today, let me see your credit report. All three. You showing me Equifax. Don't nobody put nothing on Equifax. It costs too much. That was a biblical marriage. Are y'all hearing me tonight? Please understand this. So, 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 so watch this. What we've got to understand is a relationship then is not based off of your emotion. It's based off of a decision. And to have better relationships, you don't need to have better emotions. You need to make better decisions. It's quiet in this church. That's a preach, Bishop. Watch this. There are three levels to relationships. Somebody say three levels. Number one is your relationship with God. Watch this. Jesus said, Jesus said, what are the greatest commandments? He said, number one, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Watch this. He said, that's the most important thing. But, but watch this. Then he said, but there's a second one. Does your neighbor say there's a second one? Love your neighbor. Watch this, though. Here's the catch. As yourself. See, let, let, me, let, me, let me help you. Let me help you. So in other words, there's three relationships. Say three. With God. Now, please understand this. The reason why most people have issues in their relationship is because they get in the relationship to try to fix something that's wrong with the first two levels of relationship. So their relationship with God's not right, so they try to go find somebody else to fill the void. Are you hearing what I'm saying tonight? And so your number one priority as a human being is to make sure you and God are good. Because if you and God are good, you don't have to worry about being found. You don't have to worry about going to find. God will bring the right thing into your life. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me tonight. And so what happens is God says, you got to make sure it's right here first. Who does God say you are? What does God say? You know, people in the body of Christ, you got to know who you are in Christ. And the half of them don't know. It looks straight ahead. I know I ain't honey. And a relationship with God is not coming to church on Sunday and Wednesday. A relationship with God is what you do when you wake up. A relationship with God is what you do when ain't nobody else looking. That's relationship. Because it's a decision that I've left the world and made a decision to cling to God. Second level. Watch this. Watch this. Love your neighbor. Watch this. As yourself. Watch this. I said, I'm going to help you. Watch this. First, I get it right with God. But I can't get it right with you till I got it right with me. And the reason why so many people are in jacked up relationships is because they're with somebody that hates themselves. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me tonight. And why do people cheat? They cheat because they feel inadequate within themselves. Why are they workaholics? Because they feel inadequate within themselves. And you trying to make them love you and baby, they hate themselves. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So first I get it right with God. But then I got to get right with myself. Watch this. Watch this. You've got to love who it is that God has made you to be. If your feet stink, either love it or go get you some Victoria's Secrets and let her help you fix them. She'll keep it a secret for you. 
Are y'all in here tonight? And so now watch this. So I get it right with God. Then I get it right with myself. I've got to accept myself. You got to be like Paul sometimes and says, the right that I want to do, that I don't find myself doing. But everything I don't want to do, that's what I do. Oh, wretched man. You got to come to realizing that sometimes there's some stuff with you you don't understand. And there's some paradoxes about your existence that even you don't understand. And you don't know why you do it like this and why you act like this and why you sit like this. and why. But you just got to come to grips and say, baby, that says how I've been built. Because what happens in relationships is, is people have these ideas. They get these visions of, I'm going to turn them into this. Especially for people in the ministry. I'm going to turn her into a first lady. That's why you're saying nobody's sitting right over there. What's this? I ain't going to get involved in no construction projects. It's quiet in this church. And watch this. Watch this. So they have all these things. And so I'm going to change this about them. And see, they talk too loud. So I'm going to change this about them. And they do this. I'm going to change it. And the problem is, is that they haven't even come to grips with that about themselves. And so how are you finna change somebody? Tell somebody. You can't tell nobody. Tell them. Say, you can't change nobody. Now watch this. Once I get it right with God... Then I come to grips with who I am. But please understand, that means you got to know your assignment. You do not get in a relationship to find yourself. You find yourself before you get in a relationship. Because can't no man or no woman find you if you don't know where you at. to get in this marriage because see I'm going to get this business started. No, you get the business started so you know who you are before you try to go get with somebody. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Preach, Bishop. All right, watch this. So once I get it right with God, then I get it right with myself. Then do I have the ability to love my neighbor? Because see, the condition is I got to love you like I love me. So if I treat you bad, I'm really telling about myself. If they lie to you, they're really telling you about themselves. They can't even be honest with themselves. If they cheat on you, they're really cheating on themselves. They, they, y'all ain't going to say nothing to me tonight. Well, well, why, watch this. Why, watch this. So, so when most people do not love who God has made them to be, please understand, they will try to get stuff right here when this ain't right. And if this ain't right and this ain't right, this can never be right. And you can try to teach yourself to love and teach me how to love and all that, but you don't love you. Until you love you, you can't teach nothing. Because here's the next thing. Here's the problem is most folk don't understand what love is. I love him. How you know? Because, I mean, I ain't never met nobody like him. Of course you ain't met nobody like him. You never met him before. That's real simple. That ain't deep. No spirituality needed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, 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 so watch this. Touch your neighbor and say, he's going somewhere. Watch this. Love. Let me tell you what love is. You know, everybody, you know, at their wedding, they play Kirk Franklin's song. Patient, patient. All that. Love, like a relationship, is a decision. Let me help you. Because, see, there are going to be times in relationships where there's no feeling of love. And you're going to look over there and you're going to want to say something to them. You're going to want to speak in tongues. They understand. And so there's going to be times you don't feel love. But please understand, there are times I don't feel like eating Chinese food. There are times I don't feel like eating Mexican food. Because my emotions and my feelings change every single day. Are y'all learning anything? Tonight? They change every single day. So love is a decision. Say, Bishop, a decision to do what? Go to 1 Corinthians 13. It's a decision to do all this stuff you be saying. Baby, I love you. I, I give you the sun, the moon. You ain't paid your Honda off. I,
I, I'm trying to, li listen, listen, I, 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 I want to make sure we get this tonight. I'm going very slow tonight because I want to make sure that we get this. Please understand, nothing I'm teaching tonight is designed to beat you up. It's designed to show you where we've made mistakes in the past, me included, and to show us how not to make them in the future. And let me say something to you tonight. If you're in a relationship tonight, I said I was on the radio yesterday, and I said there's people that are going to show up tomorrow night. They got the divorce paper signed. They're ready to go. The attorney's ready to go. The court date set. But tonight might be the very catalyst that changes everything. So you better not sit in here acting like you know this because you don't. Go to 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Are you there? So love is a decision. Watch this. It's not an emotion. Compassion is the emotion that's a byproduct of love, the decision. Every time Jesus healed somebody, the Bible says he was moved with compassion. Compassion is the byproduct of the decision called love. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, so let's look at it now because everybody say this. Love, love is, suffers long or is patient. It's, you, you, let, let me help you because see, when you make a decision in a relationship to love somebody, what you're saying is, is I make a decision that as long as it takes you to get your stuff together, I knew about it up front. You, you missed what I just said. So since I knew about it up front, I already checked to make sure the price was right. And apparently I thought it was good enough because I signed the papers. So now that I've made a decision to love you, if it takes you a little time to get your stuff together, love is patient. That's why you do your due diligence up front. You do your homework up front because if you pay up front, you pay less. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it says it's patient. It, it's kind. It does not envy. It does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. It's not rude. Quit saying you love your spouse and you're rude to them. Talking about you was in a bad mood. Who are you? You know, I just got a bad temper. Well, you need to work that out. See, you should have got that right up here because that ain't my problem. Let me just take a commercial break. Please understand, people only get away with what you allow them to do. And in relationships, so y'all getting this tonight? In relationships, stop complaining about what somebody's doing because please understand, they do it because you allow it. Well, she don't do this, he don't do this, he don't do this. You allow it. Quiet in this church tonight. Preach, Bishop. Does not seek its own. But what, what, what's this? Let, let me get, let me, let me, let me. Talk. It is not provoked. Bishop, she made me. See, I, I, I was just, see, I, I was doing good. You need to go see a therapist if your anger's like that. She made me. And let me just make another announcement tonight. Please understand, if you're in a relationship where there's physical abuse going on, let me just help you understand something. You want a word from God? Get out. L let, me, let me help you. You came asking God what you're supposed to do? Run. That is never God's will, ever. If he want to hit somebody, bring him up here. Show you how much a man he is. He only hit a woman. All right. Just had to put that out there. You see all these brothers on this first row? Yeah, they're ready for you. <laughs> and let me say this, too, because I know women beating folks these days, too. So let me, let me just get it right now. I can't even put that on men. And listen, man, if she beating you, I <laughs> you <laughs> need to run, too. <laughs> Why are you talking about you serve the king of kings and the lord of lords and you can't control your anger and you got to hit on somebody? Love is not provoked. There's nothing you can do that's going to make me act crazy with you because you can't provoke me because I decide to love you. You can't make me cheat on you. I decided I'm going to love you. And so you can say what you want to say and do what you want to do, but I made a decision. Touch three people say, I made a decision. Oh, I feel like teaching tonight. It thinks no evil. It does, but well, this, it does not rejoice in iniquity. I could deal with that, but you got to get the tapes. I don't have time to get in all of it tonight. Iniquity is generational sin. In other words, love does not rejoice in looking at someone else suffer through something that's generational. T 
he's just like his father. Love don't do that. Love don't do that. She's just like her mama. None of them submit. Love don't do that. That's a curse. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me tonight. It bears all things, believes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The problem is, is you spiritual, but somebody you know didn't realize it was the decision. That's why it failed. It's amazing to me how people can be so in love. Let me say something else. Ain't no such thing as in love. Now, there's different facets to love, and I don't have time to teach about that tonight. There's different uh, kinds of love. Love is one thing, yet there are different faces to love. There's agape, there's phileo, there's there are all these different things. But please understand, but, but, but love, what well, well, I says, love has always been a decision. Well, I says, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. P please understand, Jesus didn't want to die. I know you think he was walking up Calvary just, you know, hallelujah, I'm going to do this for these people. Woo! His flesh did not want to die, but he made a decision that, Father, not my will, but it's got to be your will that's done. I don't want to die for these crazy folk. Is there anybody that's glad he did, though? Anybody that's glad that he died for you? Anybody thankful for God's grace and God's mercy? If it was not for his goodness and his mercy that had been following you all the days of your life, you'd be strung out on dope somewhere but God. So watch this. Well, watch this. Watch this. I, I, I got to get through this. I'm running out of time. Watch this. Watch this. So therefore, using deductive logic, having better relationships is really about making better decisions. Now, now, now watch this. So here's the question. Where do we make bad decisions before a relationship begins? Watch this. Number one, we make long-term decisions from temporary locations. Bishop, what does that mean? You needed a place to stay, and they let you live there, and so now you're talking about you in love. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. That's too real for them. That's too real. That's too real. I'm sorry. That's too real. And so now y'all in love and all that because you really want to make sure you don't mess up your good deal because you ain't got to pay no rent. Tell somebody, say, you know he's telling the truth. Tell somebody, you know he's telling the truth. What do you mean, Bishop? Temporary, permanent decisions from temporary locations. You didn't have nothing else to do, so you figured. I ain't really doing nothing else. I don't have a vision. I don't know where I'm going. Well, watch this. Watch, watch this. Let me get you. Watch, watch this. Well, you got pregnant. Uh, 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 Y'all ain't going to say nothing. Uh, uh, listen, I already gave you a disclaimer. And so, well, since we, since we had a child, you know. We need to do right by this child. Let me tell you, sometimes right means no to. A man does not mean a father. Just because you got a man in the house does not mean you have a father. Just because you got a... Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. So we're talking about doing what? Making permanent decisions from what? Temporary look at. Well, watch this. You have been with them since high school, so they were all you knew. So this was really easy because after all, who wants to start dating again? I know you. You know me. We kind of know each other. Let's just do it. I mean, you know, why not? I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, when you were in 10th grade, I looked at you. I said, I know one day. You a lie. Watch this. In a relationship, the first three months are called the ecstasy stage. It literally means you have temporary insanity. Your mind does not have the ability. I'm serious. Check it out with the doctors. It cannot make proper decisions pertaining to the relationship. Unfortunately, that's what ma most people make long-term decisions is during those first three months. Y'all been dating for six weeks, and all of a sudden, y'all got colors picked out. Y'all got a date set. And y'all talking about we know it's God's will. If it's God's will, wait. What you in a rush for? It's too quiet in this church tonight. I, it's way too quiet in here. 
Oh, watch this. Watch this. People come into your life with two things. You ready? A purpose and an expiration date. Now, I said some of those expiration dates may be forever. It don't end. But some of them, their expiration date is clearly marked. And you know why the relationship stinks? Because spoiled milk stinks. It's expired, and you're trying to hold on to something that's dead, trying to call it God. That's too real, because... That's why you can't even stand going home. It's expired. All right, it's, it's, it's too, 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 too. Second thing we do before a relationship. Are y'all all right tonight? Do you mind if I teach it? Second thing we do before a relationship where we make bad decisions. Watch this. You were looking for your soulmate. Or you just felt like this was the one. And somebody who called himself prophetess, missionary, southern evangelical, apostolic, left overseer of the right section of the seat said, honey, you just going to know. You just, you're going to see him and you're going to know. Can, can I, can, let me, that's a lie. Okay, let me help you because y'all look at me, Bishop, show me some scripture. All right, go to Jeremiah 17. I'm going to show it to you. Jeremiah 17, let me show it to you. Let me show it to you. Well, well, I said, somebody told you, know, and that used to be the big thing in the body. Okay, honey, you just going to know. Matter of fact, I did just wink at me if somebody ever told you that. How are you supposed to know? They just, yeah. See, I ain't trying to put you out there like that. I ain't, try, I ain't trying to put you out there. Watch this. Or you're going to find it's your soulmate. Woo, y'all think alike. I know this is the one. We complete each other's sentences. Called a familiar spirit. But I ain't got time to work that tonight. Just like the Lord can anoint somebody, don't you think for one minute that the enemy can't anoint somebody and you put it out there, Lord, if God sent me somebody six foot, six pack, six figure, I'm out of here. So the enemy will find somebody and send them in your life. And, Lord, this is what I pray for. God answers prayer. So, so, so watch this. Let me deal with this soulmate thing. You there in Jeremiah 17? Now watch this. Before you read it, watch this. Your soul is your Now, in Scripture, the word heart is also the same word, Greek word cardia, for mind. So let's find out what the Bible says about your mind. Jeremiah 17, 9. Ready, read. This is my soulmate. I know it. Your heart is desperate. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me tonight. I, I'm going to quit preaching hard like this because I want to. If you just think happy thoughts and you just pray every day, God's going to work it out. The book said your mind is deceitfully wicked, meaning it will tell you something that's not the truth. You have, watch this because I know you spiritual, but somebody you know used to do this. They start telling a lie. I know you don't do this. They start telling a lie, and by the end of the whole thing, they actually believed it. They convinced themselves of something that wasn't even true, that they knew wasn't true. Because the book said, your mind, your heart is deceitfully wicked. It's desperate. And so now that explains, because we're talking about bad decisions we make before a relationship, your heart is desperate. So the first thing that gives it some kind of affirmation. It's the one. First thing that tells you you're looking good, it's the one. He got three teeth, I, baby, baby, he loves me, and love is all that matters. But you didn't check to make sure the price was right. It's quiet in this church tonight. I don't want y'all to think I'd be preaching this hard like this. <laughs> but are y'all learning? Let's, let's say something if you're learning. Let me help you. Number three, watch this. You were looking for a person to be something that only God was supposed to be for you. And the problem is, is they fail. Because they're trying to, you try to get somebody to fill a spot that only God can fill. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? So here's how you know that. Uh, the, the, he's my everything. So the Lord says, I'm jealous. I have nobody in front of me. So he's your everything? All right. Two months tops. You, you missed what I just said. Because the Lord says, I will have nothing in front of me. So if you put a man, a woman, a relationship, a job in front of me, I'll remove it. Are y'all here tonight? It's quiet in this church. So they're my world. They're my life. And so God says, since they're all that to you, I need to prove something to you that I'm the only one that can be all that for you. Are y'all in this place tonight? Number four, you're so scared to fail again, you end up pushing a good person away, making them pay for another's mistakes. And so you're in a brand new relationship and a brand new thing. You saw it in the skit. And, and when you argue, you don't even argue about stuff that's going on in your relationship. You argue about something that somebody else did to you. And when you see them, you don't even see them as themselves. You see them as the person that betrayed you, the person that hurt you. And so now you're trying to figure out why you're not making progress. You want to know why? Because you're still married to somebody else. Ah, oh, oh, it's quiet in this church. All right, all right, all right. Watch this. Number five, you don't really know who it is that you're marrying, and you choose to ignore the red flags. Talking about mistakes we make before the, the relationship begins. Watch this. Watch this. You, you don't really know who it is that that person is, and so you think that once you get them, you're going to change them. And I know they don't go to church now, but the Bible says the unbelieving spouse would be sanctified by the blood. Watch this. That, 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 don't, that don't apply to you. You better understand that this is talking in a time where Christ had not come yet, so there was no revelation of Christ. So there were people that were yoked together that one was an unbeliever because they had not been converted to Christianity. Not you got married and you knew they didn't believe. That ain't what that scripture said. Did you hear what I just said? I'll apply to you today. Jesus has been revealed. That, that don't apply no more. I'm just trying to just pop the bubble. That's all I'm trying to, I'm just trying to get us to, God says my people are destroyed, not for lack of faith, not for lack of money, not for lack of church attendance, for a lack of knowledge. I'm just trying to get us the gnosis tonight. So, so watch this. Watch this. When you get in a relationship with a person, a relationship is a what? Decision. When you get in a relationship with somebody, you are deciding to connect yourself to everything that pertains to them. Everything. And that is the reason why you need to know what's going on in their life. You need to know. If, and I'm going to give you some red flags to look for. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you what to look I'm going to help you. I, you're going to get all $10 worth tonight. Then some. <laughs> Somebody said then some. Watch this. Four major red flags. Four major ones. You ready? If you listen to these four, I promise you, you will never make a bad decision in your relationships again. And some of y'all saying, well, Bishop, I'm already married and you already got in my stuff. I'm going to show you how to fix that too. So watch this. Number one, if a man did not have a good father and mother and he will not submit to spiritual leadership, watch out. Let me, let me help you. Go to Genesis 2.24. I'm going to help you with something. Let me say that again. If a man did not have a good father and mother, and he refuses to submit to a spiritual father and to spiritual leadership, you need to run. You are not a doctor. You're not a therapist. You don't have no degree in counseling. Run. Forrest, run. Let me help you. Genesis 2.24, you have it. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Please understand this. A father in its simplest form means one who gives life or identity. A mother is one who sustains the identity or life that has been given. So when this scripture is not talking about just literally leaving your mother and father, this scripture says you've gotten your identity 
and you've been walking in it. And only at that point are you ready to talk about you somebody's husband. Because if you don't know who you are, you ain't ready to cover nobody. It's quiet in this Catholic church tonight. And what happens is, is you try to get in these relationships. And that's why if he won't go to church and he won't meet your bishop, he ain't the one. If he will not submit to spiritual leadership, Why, Bishop? Because then you're going to have to be his father and his mother trying to raise him. So the first 10 years of your marriage, you're going to be playing babysitter. And then the man says she won't submit. And then he, she says, well, he won't leave because he's a boy in a big man's body. It's too quiet in this church tonight. It's way too quiet in there. I know y'all don't get preaching like this in... in what 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 says what 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 says what 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 says what what says so so if there's not been nurturing there and he refuses to sub see it's dangerous to submit to somebody that won't submit to somebody and if he will not submit to a pastor and get himself a spiritual father and sit down and shut up and learn something he's not the one and let me help you cuz all the ladies said amen but I got something for y'all too If she won't submit now in the non-essentials, where, where, where my runners go? Y'all speaking of Hiko Shonda, Mitsubishi Subaru, where you at now? Oh, because listen, listen, some of y'all looking at me with religious eyes. Please understand, I'll call you out. Don't play with it. If she, what's this, Bishop, what does non-essentials mean? If, if she won't submit and call on you at a certain time before you get papers, after you get papers, she's not going to submit in the essentials. If she will not submit in the non-essentials beforehand, she will never submit in the essentials after you got papers. Bishop, what papers are you referring to? I'm referring to your decree of marriage. Well, Bishop, she won't submit. She's never submitted, so what are you surprised about? And let me help the single ladies, because you saw in the play tonight, I know this is the generation of independent women. I know you got your own money, got your own car, you wash your own car, you armor all your own car, you get your own chamois. I know this stuff is different. I know you can do all that by yourself. But as long as you keep flexing, you're going to scare away every man that could properly cover you. No man wants a man unless he wants a man, man. It's quiet in this church. I got my degree. I got my own money. Shut up and sit down somewhere. I didn't ask you all that. It's too quiet in this church tonight. But here's the deal, men. What is submission? Submission. Get up under a mission. If you don't know where you're going, she will not submit because she don't know where you're leading her. Well, just trust me. Well, tell me where you taking me. Where are we going? You ever notice a woman in the car? She went, where are we going? Now, maybe we're just driving. Well, that ain't going to work for me. You know, where are we driving to? Can I get a map or a program? Give me a program of where are we going. Do you have a schedule for the trip of the day? Can I get a map quest? Give me something. Tell somebody say, Bishop's preaching. So now watch this, watch this. That's the second red flag. Third red flag, they're selfish. With their time, their money, their car. Watch this, watch this. Selfish people, the reason they can't love you is because they're in love with themselves. And you can't be married successfully to two people at one time. So since they're in a relationship with themselves, why are you trying to butt in? They're in love with themselves, man. That's my call. You better get them crumbs up. This is my money. Now, I gave you $5 yesterday. What'd you, buy? you can't do nothing with $5. 
You used to be able to get five gallons of gas. Now you get about two. And we shouting over that. A few weeks ago, that gets you a gallon. You were going to home and work and back. I can't come to prayer tonight. No, I can't come. <laughs> I ain't where I want to be, honey. Thank God I'm where I used to be. What's this? Selfish people, if they're selfish before you marry them, you need to let them change before you get married to them. And if they, baby, I'll change once we do it. Well, then we ain't, so I'm sorry. Because this is a decision, not an emotion. So I feel really strongly connected. Yeah. Yeah. But if you won't stop being selfish now, I'm not going to give you the chance to disappoint me later. If you pay up front, you pay less. And doesn't it feel good? You getting this? I'm almost out of time. I'm almost out of time. Y'all getting this tonight? Fourth red flag. They're secretive and immature. They act like they love $1,700 a month. Pentagon, they lock it down. What you looking at my checkbook for? Where are you going? I'm with the boys. And, and fellas, you already know what she wants to know. Well, which boys? And where to? And how long? And what exactly y'all going to be doing? Well, you ain't my wife. She'll never be your wife if that's how you treat her before you make it married to her. Well, I says people that are secretive are always immature because they're scared you might find out a little bit too much about their little box. And so if they got a lot of secrets from you, see, see, ain't nobody going to say this in the body of Christ because, honey, just fast for them. They need to fast for themselves. All right, that's too real. That's, that's just too real. That's too real. So here's the question for single folk. Bishop, how you find a good spouse? Because I'm waiting on God. And, and please understand, let, let me help you understand something. Please understand, even Scripture talk about they who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, the mount up with wings as eagles, etc., etc. Please understand, what that word literally means there is they that stand in service to the Lord. You want, you, you, you want to know how she got found, how Boaz found her? Boaz first noticed her because of how good her service was. And so you talking about you independent and all that and won't serve in the church, won't get your hands dirty, won't do nothing because you on you know, all that. You, you's a diva, I know. Go on with your single self. She, Boaz found her because he first noticed how faithful her service was. Ladies, if you want to get found, because please understand the scripture does not say he who proposes to a man. He who suggests to a man that a proposal in the next 10 years would be nice. That ain't what it says. It says he that finds a wife. Now, but there's a condition because he didn't say a girlfriend. He didn't say a baby mama. He didn't say a chicken head. He said, he that finds a wife. What is a wife? One that has the ability to take what vision he has and nurture it and bring it to pass. Y'all ain't saying nothing tonight. That's all right. Well, well, what's this? So, so, so in other words, single ladies, the way you get found is in your service. And if you've been at Final Harvest, you know you've been learning what it means to be a servant. Because being a servant just don't mean Sundays and Wednesdays. It's about the lifestyle of a servant. A single man, how do you identify a good wife? The first thing is you get you right first. Now, I didn't say you get yourself perfect. I said you get yourself right. You get this right, you get this right, then you'll be able to see right. Otherwise, you're going to keep finding, uh, 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 what, what's that girl off of uh, Lemma Color? Shanene. Wanda. Wanda. That's him. That's Martin. <laughs> Don't you be telling me you watching UPN. Don't you be telling me. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying tonight? So now watch this. Next question. Where do we make bad? I'm about through. Where do we make bad decisions in relationships? Watch this. Bad decisions are made when you only have partial information. Now here's the deal. Bible says, now I'm talking about marriages now. Bible says that, 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 that the man should leave, cleave, and the two become. The thing about making bad decisions in relationships is you assume the worst about yourself. You missed what I just said. You missed it. You missed it. Well, well I says, if your wife is your flesh, is you. Then if every time something goes wrong, let me give you a practical example. The money, the money, the bank account mess up. And so now your first assumption is, I told her not to be going down in that shoe store getting them shoes. She'll never submit. You just assume the worst about you. So it does not reflect on her. It says, what a horrible job you're doing as a husband. It's quiet in this church. It reflects the same way for the wife back to the husband. If you assume, see, he don't never be, he don't got no, he ain't doing nothing. Talking about he driving them, he ain't doing nothing. Then it assumes the worst about you. Because it's one flesh. As long as you got my money and his money, my money and her money. See, see, see let, me let, me, let me tell you something. Please understand. See, I don't understand the culture we live in because, see, people will get upset. Now, my wife ain't going to make more money than me. See, I think that's crazy. Watch this. Watch this. I'll pick her up on payday. Drive to the bank. Put it in the joint checking account. And I might let her have some. And I ain't talking about the money. All right, watch this. You better learn how to get over your ego and get over your pride. I got that courtesy of my spiritual spiritual father, my bishop. He he, he said that. I got that from him. That ain't that ain't mine. <laughs> that ain't that ain't mine. What, what's this? So so let's get to the beginning. Y'all want to get in this? I'm about through. Give me seven more minutes. Can I have seven more minutes? Go to Genesis 3. Are you learning something tonight? So the whole goal is you're learning something that you didn't know. And if you knew all of this, then I hope it's reflecting in your fruit. A lot of people go, well, I knew that. I was kind of looking for something new. Then I hope your fruit says you know that. Because if you produce an orange, it's talking about you an apple. Check your fruit. Touch your neighbor say, check your fruit. <laughs> Anybody glad that the fact that you're here today means that God loves you enough that even though we've all made bad decisions in relationships, he gives you another day to fix it? I don't know about you, but I just shout sometimes over the fact that I got another chance to get it right. Genesis 3.1. Now, we looked in verse 25. They were naked. Watch this. They were transparent with one another, and they weren't ashamed about it. He knew all of her secrets. She knew all of his, and they were just hanging out naked. Totally transparent. Nothing could be hidden. Wasn't nowhere to hide it. Wasn't no pockets. Wasn't no nothing. That's what that means. But you can't just read the Bible, man. You got to read the Bible. Now, I'm an apostle, so I'm a revelator. So I'm not just going to look at it and take it here. I'm going to go into it. You understand that? Now, watch this. Look at, look at three, 3 and 1. Now, the serpent. Now, if you're in Bible college, you understand what really what happened here. Uh, but I'm just going to give you all just, just the easy version of what happened here. The serpent. That does not mean snake. It means deceiver. And if you study scripture, you'll understand that any time a celestial being appeared in earth, he appeared as a human being. But I'm going to leave that alone right there. The serpent or the deceiver was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now, watch this. And, and uh, Eve was not there when God gave the instruction. He gave it to Ha'adam, the Adam. The man. So what the serpent is questioning is not what God said to her, what her husband said to her. Y'all ain't getting what I'm saying tonight. 
And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, notice has said, meaning I wasn't there, I heard he said, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for in that day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, I've talked this before. The problem with that is we always say, honey, the devil is a liar. He didn't lie right there. He didn't lie right there. That's not a lie. Because if you read on, the Bible says, God says exactly those words. These, they have become just as us. Here's the problem, though. The deceiver, say deceiver. Now, I want you to think of Satan as a player. I'm going to make this relationships. You understand? You, you understand? He, he's a player. He knows all the right stuff to say. And they got all these songs now, all these men making all these songs. I do you better than your man do. That, that's what the serpent was saying. Baby, I'm going to do you better than your man do. Baby, I'm going to give you cars, and I'm going to get your hair done. All the meanwhile, they ain't got none of that, but they selling you a dream. Watch this. Watch this. Are you getting this tonight? So the enemy, what he did was he offered her something she already had but didn't know it. Because if you read Genesis 1.26, the book said that we were made in his Tashilam, his image and his likeness. Therefore, he tempted her with something she had. But that's what happens when problems arise in relationships and it looks greener on the other side. You're tempted with something you have. It's too quiet in this church. It is. <laughs> Brother preacher. Yes, yes. What's this? Well, what's this? What's this? Verse 6. So the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Now here's the problem. If Adam was covering her properly, she never would have had the opportunity to talk to a deceiver. So the question is, somewhere in here, something happened to make them two separate. Some division came in their relationship that the scripture does not record. Because why is Adam, who has dominion over all of that, letting his wife talk to something he's in control of? Something he named is been game to his wife. If you're in Bible college, you'll know she didn't eat no apple. I ain't even talk about that now. Watch this. Verse 7, then the eyes, I'm about through, of both of them were open, and they knew they were naked. They realized they had been transparent with one another. But now they've made a mistake, and they had a communication problem. So now what happens is, is now I was transparent with you, but since you didn't communicate to me about that, I think you're going to lie to me like the last one did. I'm not telling you nothing. I'm going to shut you out. You know what it's called? The silent treatment. You know what it's called? It's called outbursts of wrath. It's quiet in this church. Keep going. It's quiet in this church. It's quiet in this church. So look at what it says now. I'm about through. The eyes of both of them were open. They knew they were naked or transparent. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Watch this. They made walls to lock themselves away from one another. And while they're supposed to be married and supposed to be one flesh, they live in two separate lives. And they check in once a day calling that love. And so there's no marriage anymore. Now it's, just, now, now it's just a roommate. Now it's just, well, since we're in this thing, we got joint credit together. We got kids together. You know, yeah. you know it's just easier just, you know, let's just keep it together. But that expiration date, since you didn't make sure the price was right up front. So watch this. They have a communication problem. Now they put up walls. Say walls. The thing about walls in relationships is now you have trust issues because now you don't know what they're doing back there behind that wall. And so now when they're gone during the day, you're wondering, I bet you he's talking to somebody else. I, I bet you he's doing something with somebody else. Matter of fact, give, but baby, hey, baby, where's your phone? I got this program I want to upload. 
Baby, where your email at? But, oh, this yours? Oh, no, don't close it down. What you closing it down so fast for? No, open it back up. What you closing it so fast for? Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Keep going. And so now you don't trust one another because you got these walls up. You spiritualize the walls, not realizing that God does not believe in your wall. Notice God did not give them coverings. They made coverings for themselves. God created them to be transparent with him and transparent with one another. And the reason why we got so many broken relationships in the body of Christ, because nobody knows how to take their wall down and be real anymore. It's too quiet in this church. It's too quiet in this church. Look, and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves in the presence of the Lord God among the trees. So now they got issues, and now they run from church. They run from God. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. This we're going through some stuff right now. We're going to be out of church. For, are you crazy? You got to be stuck on another kind of stupid. I'm not judging you. I'm just trying to get, what sense does that make? We're going through right now, so we're going to take some time off from church. Church has been the only thing keeping your mind together. And now you're going to run from the only thing that's been giving you any sense. Are you crazy? That's what I said. Are you crazy? So now they run from God. Now they run from the man of God. Trying to hide themselves. You've seen me do that illustration time after time. I hope God can't see us down here. Stop. Shh, shh. I'm going to see you. And the problem is, is they thought God couldn't see them, but their hinder parts were hanging out. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. So then the Lord said to the man, where are you at? Why have you stepped out of place? Why are you not leading your family? Why is your daughter talking to that no good boy? Why aren't you covering your family? And where the hell are you? Let me just help some of y'all that don't know me. Jesus talked more about hell than he did anything else. I, I want to be WWJD. What would Jesus do? I'm doing what he did. But if somebody doesn't confront us with reality, we're going to be stuck in this third heaven spirituality thing with no change. He says, Adam, where are you at? Men, take your place. What, what, what are you doing? Why is your wife taking the kid? You get up and take your family to church what he says he says Adam where are you at why are you out of place you're supposed to be ruling and you're sitting there hiding like a child licking your wounds in the corner complaining about what your daddy didn't do what your mama didn't do and you got all these excuses and look at what Adam does I ain't gonna read no more look at what he does the Lord says where you been and then the Lord's asking him who told you you were naked you know what Adam does? He's such a man. God, I want you to know if she would have submitted. She ain't gave her nothing to submit to, but if she would have submitted. And then the woman, watch this, the woman, she's spiritual. Because see, watch this, watch this. Adam got, watch this, Adam transgressed. He willingly did what was wrong. Eve was deceived. The Bible, King James says, beguiled. She was tricked. But she was only in a position to get tricked because the man was out of place. He was not covering her. She was sick. He would not care for her. Can I make this real? She was going through and he looked at her and said, what you crying for? It ain't that bad. When he should have opened his arms to her and said, baby, it's going to be all right. Whatever you're going through, it's going to be going to get through. I'll cry with you. Put some water on my I'll do whatever I got to do because I'm covering you. 
And you won't have to be talking to no serpent because I'm covering you. No man is going to have to tell you how good you look because I told you every day how good you look. You come in here looking like that again, I'm going to sup you up with a biscuit. You ain't saying nothing to me. Man, where are you? Somebody on the job don't have to tell her how nice her pumps are. I fought them for her. Because husbands, your wives are a reflection of you. Why you got the new car? Is she driving the hoopty? Come on, Adam, ha dumb. It's quiet in this church. But now here, here, here's where we have the issue. Men sometimes will go for long periods of time without covering. And then now the woman has had to be covering. And now the man comes back and says, all right, I'm ready to do it. But because she's had to do it for so long, she rejects his leadership. See, this is too real for the church tonight. I'm, I'm going I'm to be through. I'm going to be through. I'm going to be through. And, and so, and so, and so now you want to lead. But when I needed you to lead, when the kids were getting bad grades and all that and, 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 and stuff was going crazy, where, where were you? Oh, I know what you were doing. You were busy making walls. You were busy making coverings. You were busy trying to conceal something from me. And so now you get in this situation now where you got two people in a house and it's war because they both have forts built. And one fires a shot. You ain't a good man. Oh, you ain't going to say that to me. You don't submit and you, your cooking is nasty. You can't even dress good. Then she goes in the real punch. I can't stand your mama. Because, I says, I'm through. I'm about through. You got two people trying to be two people opposed to being one flesh. I'm about through. I'm about through. Watch this. Y'all hear? So what is God's original plan? Watch this. In relationships, we mess up that plan when we play the blame game. And y'all will spend our days going back and forth trying to figure out whose fault it was. Well, no, I, I don't see what the big deal is. I, you know, I don't see what the problem is. Well, listen, if it's a problem, learn to communicate about it. Does somebody say, talk to me? You know what I found out about the body of Christ, what we got to work on? Is we really don't know how to communicate with one another. We don't even talk to one another. <laughs> when you're leaving, you don't say goodbye. I got the You text your spouse more than you talk to your spouse. It's quiet in this church. We create problems in relationships when we're not transparent. See, if somebody has to guess about where you're at, it means you're not a good communicator. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If they got to wonder and hope and pray, I hope today is the right day to ask them about that. If they got to go through all them changes, you're not a communicator, and that's not called leadership. That's called dictatorship. And I, last time I checked, we were in a theocracy ran by a king. She going to do what I say. I'm the man. Yeah, that's the problem. You are hot, Dom. You're him. Watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm about through. Tell somebody I say you're about through. Watch this. When you're not transparent in a relationship, what does transparency mean? Let me make it real simple to you. Baby, this is how I feel. This is how I feel. This is how I feel. Man, stop thinking this is what you know what I let me tell you. If you really I'm gonna tell you a secret. Now, ladies, look, close your ears. Men sit up real close, real close, real close. Watch this. Let me tell you a secret. Let me tell you a secret. Key sweat figured it out. Ain't nothing wrong with crying. 
Matter of fact, if you had wisdom, baby, baby, you know, you, you can't sing, but you start singing to her. Man, it's all right to be transparent. It's all right to say, baby, when you said that, that hurt me. Trying to put your tail. Ain't nobody scared of you. Slamming doors. That's not real mature. That's real mature. Oh, 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 slam that door. Oh, 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 oh. It's quiet in this church. Be transparent, man. Tell her, listen, ba baby, you know what? When you said that, that really hurt. When you said my feet stink, that just, that hurt me. Can you help me? Transparent. It's all right to show emotions to your wife. If you can't show your emotions to your wife, what are you doing? But women, you can't beat him up when he comes to you with his emotion. What you crying for? Ain't you supposed to be the man? Go cover me. You hush and just, it's all right, baby. It's all right. And if you're a wise woman, you start singing to him. Can't sing? Get you a track. Get you an iPod. Are you getting this tonight? But when you're not transparent and your spouse has got to guess where you're at, it's going to produce fear. Watch this. Fear is a repellent to what you really desire, but it attracts what it is you fear. You're scared they'll cheat or they'll cheat on you. And so what you end up doing is you attract that into your life. Oh, Bishop proved it with scripture. Job said, the thing that I feared the most finally came upon me. In other words, what Job did was his fear attracted something to him. Now, God still had an intention to bless him, but I don't think it had to be that bad in order for him to get it. But his fear attracted that. He said, what I feared the most came upon me. And so when you walk around acting like you're CSI, checking, whose number is that? Checking pages. Who is Lobat? Uh-uh. Who is Lobat? Who is iPhone? Uh-uh. Who no, iPhone? -y. Who is iPhone? -y? No, I know this girl. Her name is iPhone. -y. Who is iPhone? -y? Uh-uh. What well, about this? <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling the truth too. And if your name is iPhone, -y, I love you. We love you tonight. What's this? <laughs> so for example, infidelity. You fear them cheating on you because you've been cheating on before, but cheated on before. So now you fear that. And so what you end up doing is in the spirit, you bring that into yourself. And so when they do cheat, now I say, I told you so. I knew it was going to happen. Why? Because as a man thinks. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me tonight. Last thing in a relationship, when you become selfish in a relationship, you're going to create fear. When, when, when you start now acting and keeping stuff and, and being selfish was what's supposed to be y'all. It's amazing because I watch couples and I'm saying, it's amazing to me because I think y'all brother and sister. I didn't know you were married. You, you, you fighting over, over who put the shoes in this. I thought it was our closet. I, I didn't know. I didn't know it was yours like that. I didn't see the sign. I didn't see the sign. Did y'all see how stupid that is? And now, watch this, because watch this. How do you fix it in a relationship? You make sure the price is right. So if I'm going to be selfish, I better make sure that's worth losing my family over. If I'm not going to be transparent, I better make sure I'm going to lose my wife over that. I better make sure I'm willing to pay that price. Because if you're not, then you need to reevaluate your actions. Bishop, how do you fix a broken marriage? Number one, hush. Somebody's calling your name. You got to be quiet and learn how to communicate. 
I know you got it all figured out. I know. And I know you on the phone counseling everybody else's marriage. Oh, see, I'm talking about your neighbor now. You're trying to tell everybody else, see, what you need to do. No, what you need to do, brother, is go fix your camp. Once your camp is right, then you come holler at me about my camp. Till your camp is right, nah. uh Debbie, Debbie, shh, not come. In a relationship, you got to be quiet and listen to one another. If you be quiet, you'd realize you both are probably saying the same thing. Y'all just never took time to pay up front, so you don't know how to communicate. So it's going to take some time. Say, take some time. Stop thinking because y'all had four arguments in one day that, oh, this is it. Oh, this is it. I know it's it. I mean, you know, we've never argued four times before. It's not that bad. Now, remember, remember now, now, if you get beyond that, you call Bishop. And I roll deep. All right, watch this. Watch this. I'm just being joking tonight, y'all. I mean, it's all right to have fun in church, ain't it? I'm about through because I know y'all saying, I didn't come to all this. I, didn't, I just came for a third. hour and a half service. I didn't come to all this. That, that's the problem. You try to rush stuff. And you try to rush God, and you try to rush what, can't you give me like four steps or what to do? To not, no, it's more than that, because please understand, the only thing that's going to change your relationships from this moment forward is you taking what I'm giving you and you using it. You just quoting it tomorrow as somebody at work, ooh, that, and he said, you got to just, you got, he said, men, where are you? But that ain't what he said, honey. He said, but, but I can't say what he said, but where are you, men? <laughs> you quoting it back and forth to somebody else, that's not going to fix your stuff. Fix a broken relationship. Second thing, husbands, you have got to be submitted to God and to spiritual leadership. If you will not submit to your pastor, your bishop, whoever, if you will not submit, then it, your, you can kiss your wife's have been to you. You can, boop, gone. Never going to happen. Stop praying for it. Not going to, no, Never going to happen. It's the law of linkage. I don't have time to teach that. Men, be submitted to God, be submitted to spiritual leadership. Three, it's amazing to me how many couples don't pray together at the beginning of a day. Let me, I promise you, you're not that busy. I promise you. I promise you, you're not. I got to go. I got to wake up earlier. You're, you're not that busy. To take 10 minutes together and pray for one another. Cover your children. Cover your family. You'll pray with somebody on the street. Won't, won't pray with your wife. Quiet in this church. Fourth thing, fast together. It's amazing. People will fast. I need a financial breakthrough. I'm on a 78-day fast. I'm on a 365-day fast for my financial breakthrough. But for your marriage, you've not fasted once. You ain't pushed the plate back once. You ain't been at prayer meeting for it once. But it's not enough. You both have to do it. Matthew 18, 19, wherever two or three gathered on anything, touching and agreeing, that thing shall be done. When you fast together as a couple, not only do you get the power Daniel had, you get double. Because you've got agreement. I'm just trying to make this real practical. Number five, this, uh, now watch this, watch this. Have good intimacy. Notice I did not say sex. Because let, let me help you. Intimacy and sex are two different things. And as long as you're married talking about, well, let's come on, honey, baby, let's have some sex. You, you missed it. Because a woman's not interested in all that. And some of the ladies are like, well, wait a minute, Bishop. <laughs> a woman, more than sexual gratification, she wants Intimacy. She wants to know you love her. That's why she says, hold me, t t t love me, grab me. That that's why she says that. She's looking for intimacy. You looking to, you know. She's looking for intimacy. I want love. I can breathe hard by myself. I can go running to start sweating. I don't need you to do that. I want you to love me. If you're married and still having sex, you need to get some of my tapes so you can learn how to make love. But I don't know how to say that in the church because I know y'all just supposed to sit back and forth at the table praying and looking at one another. <laughs> I 
At some point, you're going to have to get in the room and, and, and get them lights out. You're going to have to be like Teddy. Turn them off! You're going to turn them off. This is a relationship conference. And I mean, sometimes during your intimate time, and I'm not talking just about sex, I'm talking about conversation because the woman, she wants that. Well, baby, how was your day? I mean, but no, but like, what did like, you, I mean, well, I went to work and came home. And, no, she wants to know who was at work, who called in, why they called in. Is their wife still tripping with them? And all that. She, she, intimacy. So during that time, sometimes you got to go put the phone on vibrate. I do you one better. Turn it off. That's Bishop's calling now because that's important. Call my no, no, seriously. Because if you don't make time for one another, somebody's going to make time to go talk to a serpent. Please understand, pe people just don't, people just, pe please understand, it's just not this stuff just happens during a relationship. People don't just, just it, it over, happens over time. And either you grow together or you grow apart. Are you learning tonight? I'm about through. Number six, make sure the price is right before you get in an argument. Now, I know that we talked about this, but is it really worth ruining our whole day over this? Is the price right? Tell somebody to say, is the price right? Is it really worth it? I, I know you got to get your point across because ain't no man going to talk to you like that. Your daddy didn't talk to you like that. I, no, I don't need that long. My sis. But is the price right? Is it worth letting your kids see you in a disagreement? Is it worth letting your kids see that you behave worse than they do? And then you wonder why they act like they do. They just doing what they see. Monkey see, monkey do. And you wonder why they don't mind you because y'all can't submit to one another. It's quiet in this church. Last thing. Did y'all learn? Last thing. So seed for the success of your relationship. It got real quiet right there. I knew the preacher going to talk about it. See, I ain't even just talking about money. You need to sow encouragement to somebody else's relationship. Seeds reproduce after their own kind. It's amazing. You'll sow seed for this, that, and the other, but you won't sow nothing for your relationship. As this is supposed to just fix itself through the process of osmosis. When I wake up, the Lord, it's, I just know, I just know. Let me tell you what God said. It's going to be the same. Word from God. It's going to be the same because you want to know what? People change one or two times, and I'm through, when they learn enough that they want to or they hurt enough that they have to. My question for you in this 2008 relationship conference is, which one will you be? Is it going to have to hurt? Or are you going to use what you've been taught and what you're going to go avail yourself to are you going to use that and say, I'm going to make changes? Because before I decide that I, I can't do this and can't do that and all that, have I really done everything that I could do? Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I'm through. Watch this as you play playing real soft. Play real soft. Make it real, you know, real nice. Set the mood. Oh, watch this. Only what God has put together can no man put asunder. You missed what I just said. So if a man can pull it apart, God never put it together. Here's the deal about relationships, y'all. Sometimes it requires us to make tough decisions. Sometimes it requires us to do stuff and to say stuff. And we may, you know, Lord, I really want really, you. Yeah. But at the end of the day, a relationship is not about your emotions. It's about your decisions. And you can choose from this day forward to have the same kind of messed up relationships. Because you're here tonight. I know why you're here tonight. You're here tonight because if it was all gravy. You're here tonight because there's some area of your relationship. I'm not saying it's messed up. There's some area of your relationship that needs work. And here's the good news. You can fix it. But I need to make an announcement to you. God's not coming down to fix your stuff. You got to change. Didn't nobody want to hear that? Just turn around three times. He's... Woo! 
what? Let my change. But I don't know about you, but I've had, see, the Bible says in Jeremiah, God said, I'm mad at the prophets because they keep saying stuff I didn't say. And they keep giving hope, but it's, it's false hope because I didn't say it. And they keep saying this is going to happen and this is going to happen and this is going to happen, but it never happens because nobody wants to tell the people of God that it requires change. It requires you to realize you don't know all you think you know. And if you keep acting the way you do, you're going to be by yourself. You, you know what? I was talking to a preacher that he said, he said when couples come into him, he said he has one or two kind of couples. He says, there's a lot of single people that say, you know what? It's lonely on Saturday night. But he said, you know what? The worst thing is when a married couple comes in and says, it's lonely on Saturday night. It's a decision. Now, here's what I'm going to do tonight, because I know that there's those of you here tonight, you've got questions. How many people, you got some questions. You got some practice stuff. You got... Oh, y'all ain't going to, I did a good job. I did a pretty good job. All right, good, good. Here, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. You, uh, in, your, in your package there, in, your, in your, uh, uh, your, your bag there, you got, a, uh, you got a, a half sheet of paper on cardstock like this. You got this. I want you to take this out tonight. I want you to take this out tonight. <coughs> They hooked up. Y'all got a magazine. Here it, my God. All right. Well, I see this. On the back of that sheet, it says this. What commitment do you make with yourself of what not to do in the future? And this is for single folk, dating folk, married folk. I just want you to take a few minutes. Just take two or three minutes. And I don't want this just to be another con. I want you to actually leave with something that you're committing to yourself, you're not going to do in the future. Let's take a few minutes. If you don't have a pen, ask your neighbor, can I borrow your pen? If you don't have no pen, y'all work together. Oh, it's a pen. In, we gave you a pen in the bag? <laughs> we gave him everything. We 100%. Amen. Very good. Amen. So use your Final Harvest Christian Center trademark pen and get back. What commitment do you make to with yourself? Maybe in the play you saw that you, you, kept, you keep picking the one that, that, that's the thug. And you convince yourself you're going to change him and make him into a God-fearing man. Let God change him first into a God-fearing man. Then you get married. Stop signing up for projects that you're not equipped to work on. 